Hello, and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and today what we're going to be doing is uh, setting up an automatic door. So, um, we're going to be using the Unity animations and trigger system to do this, and so this script will actually be useful for you to do a lot of things that you might commonly see in video games, like triggering events and, and animations and stuff as you progress through a level. So, um, I'm going to start by creating a new scene. And we're going to create a folder. We're just going to do the standard maintenance stuff here. E7. Um, automatic door. And so we're going to just create a very simple scene for this. So we're going to, this is going to be similar to a lot of our previous scenes where we've been in, in first person controller mode lately. So we're going to create a quad. No, not a quad. Actually, I'm just going to create a plane because it's already set up nicely for us. Uh, 3D object plane. And... Um, Zeroed out. Whoops. And uh, what else are we going to do? We're going to put our classic character controller in here and put him at an appropriate point. There we go. And let's make the plane a little bit bigger. Just the usual 10 by 10. And let's create a couple things for our player to do things with. So, um,. So we're going to create a cube, stretch it out, I don't know, five, five, wait, that's not a cube, that's an empty game object. Create a 3D uh, cube, yeah, I don't know what I was doing there. said cube, but I just clicked whatever was there. So um, let's make it like 10 by 4 bring it up a little bit this will be a big door yeah I know whatever and uh, yeah we'll just uh, put that over here I'm going to let's see what is the offset right now this things 10 across the offset is let's make the offset 6 negative 6 duplicate actually let's make it negative 6.5 and then duplicate it and, whoops, I said duplicate it, and move it over to six. And so now we have a little space that we could put a door in or something. Let's see if we can fit through it real quick. It's a little bit tight. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit less tight. Uh, let's make it, uh, so we did what? Oh, 86.5, that was a problem. 6.5, that'll help a little bit. And uh, we're going to create one more cube that represents the door. Alright. And this cube, so where did we put these? These are at C8.6. Let's actually just round that out real quick to 8. And put this one, we're going to call this door. And uh, this will be... What do we do? Four high. And uh, we're going to make it... Uh, what is the difference between these two? 6.5. I don't know. We'll, we'll just figure it out. Doesn't have to be perfect. So we'll just make it 2. 2.5. 3. Alright, that'll be good. And uh, to... So I'm going to put this at 8. And I'll make it flush. But we're going to make it a little bit thinner so that we can tell us the door. So 0.7 or something like that. We might want to change the color or something of it, but for this test, it's really not necessary. And I'm just going to place it so that it is on the ground. So, Y2. And, uh, and yeah, we have a door. So, um, so what we're going to do to make this door work is we're going to actually animate this door. And so we're going to have to create an animation for it, and the way we're going to set this up is kind of um, important. So, so let's go through it. So this door is going to animate. I'm just going to move it upward right now or downward or something. Let's do downward because then we don't have to pretend that it's floating in the air like it's going to be. Um, and, um, and so it's best when you're animating an object... To have it as a child because you kind of want to keep a reference to uh, where it is. Like you don't want to just have it in, in the scene. It is possible to get this set up with root motion, but that's more of a setup for characters and not for like objects that you manipulate. So we're going to create a uh, empty child, and then we're going to just make it the parent of this door. 
So I'm going to call this door geometry. And we're going to call this the actual door. And so um, what we're going to do is we can put the animator actually on either layer. Let's do it on, on this layer. Let's just do it on the door geometry itself. So um, we're going to go ahead and go to window and choose animator. And we're going to dock this window somewhere. It might come up like this for you if you haven't used animator before. I'm going to dock it. Yeah, we'll just put it here next to the game and stuff. And uh, so we're going to select the George geometry and we're going to hit wait. What is this? Okay, what changed? Animator parameter? Have I really not opened this since Unity 5? Add a layer. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens if we add a component. Um, animator onto this. Not initialized. Oh wait, animator's not what I want. Sorry, that's why I was confused. Okay, sorry. My mistake, um, I wanted an animation. So we actually want the animation view. The animator view is, is, our, is our state machine system. So, so yeah, all right, yeah, there we go, animation, yay. So I'm gonna hit, uh, and actually I am gonna put this over here because we wanna be able to see the scene. So, um, so we're gonna create a, um, a new animation by clicking record on here. And we're gonna call this uh, door, and I'm, and I'm gonna put it appropriately in our little folder on Mac door. And, um, and what we're gonna do is, so this automatically created a door geometry controller and a door animation. And now we can just animate by just moving things. So I'm just going to move this up till it's at, uh, I guess, 1.0. Actually, let's, let's move it down. Let's do negative one. So that is our final position. I'm going to make it take a second. That's probably too slow, but we'll, we'll just do it anyway. And, um, and then we have our initial position of zero. And so this is our animation of the door opening. And, uh, and actually, so this actually should be called door opening. So I'm going to actually rename that real quick. So where is our thingy? Automatic door, door opening. And I'm going to change this to door controller. And I'm just going to call it door open. And then we're going to, uh, go ahead and create a new clip called door close. Save. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to grab the door and move it. Uh, so this time it's going to start at negative one. Whoops. I'm not recording. So record. And then at one second in using the quick quickie shortcut, we can do zero and that should create both the nodes for us automatically. So that's cool. So that's, uh, the door closing. Actually, I was, I was scrubbing back. So it looked like it was opening, but it's closing. So we've got door closed and we've got door open. So, um, so now we've got animations for this thing and we're going to go into its animator now. So we're going to go into animator and not be confused by it this time. Yay. Now it looks like a real thing. So, um, so we have an entry state, which is where we enter the, uh, I guess, I think this is kind of new. Um, set layers default state. Okay. I don't know why it hasn't, I don't know what the entry state is for. I, okay. It won't let me delete that. So I have a feeling that if I make this the default state, okay. So this shows where the entry point is. It will just automatically point out instead of just rely on it being orange. It actually points to the object as well. Um, 
I hope everything's recording right. I didn't do a very thorough check. Yeah, okay, I think, yeah, it looks good. All right, so, um, so we're gonna call this door close. Actually, this one is uh, door open, so I'm gonna rename it to door open. And um, so these are the animations. So we actually want to have a new empty state called uh, initial. I'm just going to call this initial. And initial, we will make a transition to door open. And door open will have a, a, a transition to door closed. And there will be a transition back to door open from here. So initial just does nothing. Door open, so we're going to need a couple triggers. We're going to create uh, parameters here. I'm going to add a trigger. I'm going to call this uh, open. And we're going to create another trigger and call this close. And um, this transition will happen on um, condition. We're going to add a condition called open. We're going to add a condition to here called close and one more transition here open there we go so this transitions on close this transitions on open this transition on open this should be what we need and we're going to change the entry point to here so now we should be able to get into the door and open and close it if we change these, these variables, which is what we're going to do with a very little simple script. So we're going to create a simple and useful script. So we're going to create a C-sharp script called trigger animation on trigger. Sounds a little redundant, but we're talking about animation triggers in one case, and we're talking about the uh, uh, collision box triggers in the other. So, so all this is going to do, we're going to open it up in Mono Develop here. And we don't need start, we don't need update, at least I don't think we do. We're just going to do void. Um, we might need start, but um, on trigger, enter. And so we're going to have a couple variables to determine what we do in on trigger, enter. We're going to do public. Um, and actually, I'm going to call this on trigger, enter. Public string um, uh, trigger parameter name, and that uh, that's really it. So, so all we're going to do here is we're going to do. Uh, oh, we are going to need start as I said. So, void start. The reason we need this is because we need to get reference to our. Um, Animator. I guess we could do it right on the trigger, but I'm just going to do it in start. So private um, animator, animator. And then in start, we're just going to do animator equals um, get component animator. This gets our animation animator component from the object so that we can manipulate it. And all we're going to do with our animator is animator dot set bool or set uh, trigger. And we give it the name uh, trigger parameter name. There, we're done. So, um, and actually, you know, I'm going to do it on trigger and uh, on trigger enter parameter name on trigger enter on trigger exit parameter name. This will save us from having to write two completely separate scripts that do very similar things. So void on trigger exit. And so we're going to do trigger inner parameter name here, trigger exit parameter name here. And I'm going to make it so that if we only want to do one or the other, uh, we won't care about it. So if um, on trigger parameter enter parameter name does not uh, uh, dot uh, not no is thought there was a nice 
string one that we could use. Okay, well, whatever. Um, if on trigger damage does not equal null, then we do this. Same thing here, except for this time we use trigger exit. And hopefully this will work. Save. Made it a little bit more complex than I thought I was going to, but it's not like it's a complex script. So, uh, we now have this thing, we now have all this stuff here, the door's here. Uh, why is the door at 2? It should be at... No, it should be at 2. Why is the door... Geometry at negative 1. It should be at 0. There we go. So, um, so yeah. So, if we hit play right now, I just want to make sure that the door doesn't automatically animate or anything. Okay, so the door's staying, stoic, perfect. All right. So all we have to do now is place our trigger. So we're going to create a, I'm going to just create an empty game object. We're going to give it a um, physics rigid body. And we're going to put this, um, I'm going to go ahead and child it to the door. And we're going to call this door trigger. And we're going to give it a, actually, I guess we don't need the rigid body. We just need the, tr the collider. So, um, Component, physics, box collider. So this is our little trigger. Um, we're going to call it a trigger there. And we're going to put it at zero, zero. And we're going to make it uh, scale it to one, one, one. So this is the same size as the door. And then I'm just going to make it wider in the Z so that we have kind of a trigger space. So now if we place... Um, Trigger animation on trigger. Oh, wait. Now I may care about how I put the animator together. Okay, I'm just going to put this trigger, just going to copy component, and place it on the door geometry itself. Paste component as new. <sighs> there are reasons I don't like this, because this will move the trigger as well. So let's not do that. So we're going to have to do one more thing. I'm going to change this so that instead of um, acting on our own animator, we're going to have a public animator animator. And then if animator equals equals null, then we get component um, animator, and then if, so it sounds strange to check to see if it's null again, but, uh, if animator equals equals null still, that means it didn't have one on here. We're going to debug dot error, log error, um, no animator component, uh, um, on this script and then we will debug the game object as well so this way we can get a little useful error information so now what this will do is we can specify an animator if we don't specify an animator it automatically grabs the one on the object and if we don't have one on the object then it gives us a little error so what are we finally doing here console um so now we can put this on our door trigger We can drag in our door geometry as the animator, and the on trigger enter is open, on trigger exit is close. So if we hit play now, if all goes well. All right, close. Yes, so it's working except for one problem. Our animators are looping, so we just go to the door close and door open animations and make them not loop. And then, psh, door opens, walk through it, door closes. And that's an automatic door. It seems like a little bit of a complicated setup at first, but uh, but this is actually, it's actually not, not complicated to set this up, and it's a little bit more complicated than other uses you could have for this script, like just triggering. You could have like a little fun house that has like monsters that come in from the sides, and you can just trigger those animations based on, based on movement and stuff. So, so yeah, so this will be useful for you guys, so... Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and save this scene.
and we're gonna call it, oh, we didn't save it at all, um, automatic door. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Um, if you can, please donate to uh, the show, uh, patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. Thank you for your... Thank you for your time, and you guys have a great one, and uh, have a great weekend. Oh yes, it's Ludum Dare this weekend, so look it up. It's uh, it's a game competition thing. I think I think you guys will have some fun. You should make a game this weekend if you have time. Make a game this weekend. If you don't have time, make the game this weekend. That's that's a lie. If you don't have time, don't make a game this weekend. So have a good one. <laughs>